Q92.9-1CN, Kansas City. Gospel 1590, 106.1 FM. It's 9 o'clock AM. Welcome to the Morning Glory Show. Turn your volume up and let the word to God pierce your soul. 1590 AM on your radio dial and 106.1 on your FM, pal. Thank you for tuning in to the Morning Glory radio broadcast with Drs. Adam and Adrian Blackstock of Glory Bible Fellowship International Church. Sit back and get ready to receive a word that will transform your life. Good morning, good morning, radio family. This is Prophet Adrian Blackstock, Executive Pastor of Glory Bible Fellowship International Church. This is a special morning. Please stay tuned. Get your texts out, send out Facebook. We have a special guest. I have a special guest with me today, Apostle Joseph Ali, all the way from London. Amen. And so it is exciting. He's going to, we're going to be speaking about uh, some things that are going to be able to build you up in your spirit as it relates to spiritual warfare and whatever else the Lord wants to get done. So please join us tomorrow night. We're still in our revival. If it is powerful um, in a time, if my people, amen. So please join us at seven o'clock PM. Um, all ages have their own special classes. Join us for the adult classes. Um, a 1126 Northeast Delta School Road. Please mark your calendar down for Hallow Be Thy Name Deliverance Meeting. Glory on October the 31st. If you did not see or hear or listen um, to the first broadcast this month for the Morning Glory, Kay told me went over why we should not as Christians be participating in Halloween or having anything to do with it that broadcast is out there. And so all this month, we're going to be dealing with the spiritual realm, and I'm going to have special guests. And so we're excited about that. Amen. I want to um, uh, introduce Apostle. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. I'm here. Good yes. morning. Okay, glory. So hope um, they out there on Facebook as well. You guys share this video and um, continue to keep Israel in prayer um, as well as the United States. Um, we have um, Iran and uh, as well as I, I put a post out there. Apostle, we have Iran sending death threats towards the USA, and then we have the Satanists also this month cursing Christians. So this is a time for the church to pray. Apostle, you want to say anything about that? I, I think one of the things we need to be aware of is we need to have knowledge and about the strategy of the enemy. And particularly in this season, we should be seeking for the glory of God and so that that will give us a spiritual, um, comprehensive insight on how to handle the enemy. What is happening in the natural is what is also happening in the spiritual. But we are, we have spiritual intelligence. Um, the natural hand has natural military intelligence, but we have spiritual intelligence. And this is how we need to seek for the glory of God so that we can handle principalities and powers and diffuse and dissolve this strategy. Amen. You said something. Of, um, I, want to, we, I want to talk about that, those principalities and powers. But, Apostle, let them know where you located at. Amen. Uh, we, got a, we met him years, years ago uh, at the 7,000 more, and God just connected us on other platforms, and he's like a, a big brother in the spirit. Amen. So, Apostle... Yeah. Tell them where you're located at. As well. our, our, our church is based in, in the heart of London, in central London, in Oxford Street, between Oxford Street and Bond Street. And it's called House of Increase. And I have also a personal ministry called Joseph Ministries, which is an outreach ministry and apostolic, prophetic, uh, you can name it. But um, we started in the heart of London. So we've been in London for over a decade now. Amen. Now, what our, is the temperature gauge over there as it relates to Israel right now? What is, you know, in your uh, spirit influence there in London? Well, we, we're right in the heart of London. What we're focusing on is strategic prayers, strategic evangelism, because I believe God has started to do something um, in London that is that is very, very, very strategic because London is a very spiritual orb. Uh, just like Israel is a spiritual hope. So we're seeing people uh, coming together in prayer, coming together in worship. So there's a lot of spiritual activities going on in London at, the, at, the, at this particular moment. Amen. Amen. 
So, Pops, I wanted when you said something, you, you really said something about the principle. I want us to go, or oh, I'm going to go over to Ephesians, um, Ephesians chapter six. And I want to be able to read this and put this in our, um, in our ear gate. Amen. And we talk about, tell people this, you know, at verse, I'm going to start at verse 10. There's a reason why God tell us as children of God to put on the armor of God. I don't, you know, there's no reason for me to tell you to put on uh, armor or anything if you're not going to be in a battle. Amen. And so I want us to, you know, I'm going to read this from the Amplified Version, and then you can just, just take on, um, discuss, and give us, give the list and order some pointers. Because one of the things we did a platform once before it just came out organically is that African you know, that the African brothers and sisters, you guys have truly an understanding of spiritual warfare, where us Westerners, um, I feel that all of the church at large should understand this, but there's so many pastors, and I don't understand how people say they can be an apostle and a prophet, and don't understand how to engage in spiritual warfare and that we have a battle. So I do want you, and I really, um, I, I've been to London. It was under, when I went to come minister there, it was with, uh, uh, you know, uh, African um, brothers and sisters. And also I've been over in Kenya. And the fervency that I see from my African brothers and sisters is so much there. Now you may, you know, African may, people say deal with things like poverty, but the spiritual realm, you guys understand, I want you to touch on that, you know, um, your back, whether it's from your background or even um, just because of your experience. I really feel that that's where we are low at as African Americans and Westerners. So in Ephesians chapter 6, it says, in conclusion, be strong in the Lord, draw your strength from him, and be empowered through your union with him. And in the power of his boundless might, put on the full armor of God, for his precepts are like the splendid armor of a, heav uh, of a heavily armed soldier so that you may be able to successfully stand up against the schemes and the strategies. There you go, apostle. Yeah. And the deceits of the devil. For our struggle is not with flesh and blood, contending only with the physical opponents, but against the rulers, one, against the powers, number two, against the world forces of this present darkness, three, and against the spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places. This is what a heavenly was moved supernatural places. And I tell people to flip this around and you'll get the higher level of the government uh, 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 through the, in the realm of darkness, that ranking system. So apostles speak about this, these realms here that we really don't, I mean, what we're seeing right now is spirit wickedness in heavenly places now we may see men and that's doing all this here in the war but it's coming from the head guy himself satan but yeah. let's talk about these rams right here yeah all these rams are are the devices of satan and the approach is believers has to have a military mentality and, and what is missing, what I think is missing is our discipline. We are, it's not a civilian affair to handle all these levels of, of strategies of the enemy. But at the end of the book, we've overpowered them. Because we are in Christ Jesus, we've overpowered them. And the strategy that the enemy is always looking is to attack us when we are not at home. With Christ, and the reason why we say we're not at when we're not at home with, with Christ is when we've moved away from Christ. We are not in tune with Christ because Christ has given us the victory. We don't put on Christ. I like to read the scripture to just kind of um, um, address that Ephesians chapter chapter six verse ten. It's in Colossians chapter three. Uh, yeah. Yes. Verse 10. And have you clothed yourself with a new spiritual life? I'm reading from the, um, ampli um, the classic amplified translation. Have you clothed yourself with a new spiritual self, which is ever in the process of being renewed and remoded into fuller and more perfect knowledge, upon the knowledge after the image and the likeness of him 
who created it. So number one approach for us is to know that we're going to put on Christ, our new spiritual life to overcome all these uh, principalities and powers. We've already had victory. Um, Amen. Warfare is deception because we've already we've already have the victory. But it's the application of spiritual truth. And also, I like this text in Philippians chapter 1, verse 27. And this Apostle Paul is now um, giving an exhortation to the church at Philippi, telling them not to ignore their citizenship. So if we're going to deal with all these principalities and powers, we're going to exercise our citizenship right. Come on now. We're going to exercise our citizenship right. And, and let, me, let me read that text. Uh, for us to understand what I'm saying. Because we need to conduct ourselves as a believer. We need to be this, our manner of life has to be, our uh, our moral conduct has to be sound. Because we are dealing with spiritual things. It's not yes. an earthly things. We have to live holy. If we're going to be uh, uh, have victory, we have to move to holiness. There is no way we can engage in battle without the discipline of holiness. What okay, is... now, Pastor, I want you to stop right there because you, you said something. You're speaking to us, this listen to us in America, and I'm just going to drop this right here. I wasn't going to say it. Yeah. But you say, so even the people of Israel, the apple of God's eye, they're yes. still, most people don't understand that they're moving, they're mostly a lot of secular Jews, but that very sight that they were, where they got captured at from the party and stuff, there was a huge Buddha. Yeah. And someone yeah. brought that out. And you, when you're talking about, those are the people that God called to be holy. Just like yeah. he's calling us to be holy. So you said yes. something. Because everybody, I'm just, I'm just dropping that right there. That's a, a prophet's revelation. Go ahead. So uh, let, me, let me read that text. Because this is, this is the foundation has to be right. The people right now in the war front in Israel, they are military, they are disciplined, they've been trained, and we don't have a training institution that is going to prepare people for spiritual warfare. Mm. Everything, everything is fragmented. We don't have an institute, a Christian institute that is built. Uh, the Israeli have, oh. have, their, have their IDF. Here in London, we have our military intelligence. Military intelligence is not something you see on social media. They don't, they don't portray themselves in social media. They're military. They're well disciplined because they handle sensitive uh, uh, military information, mm, spiritual yeah. intelligence. So, uh, so this is what is missing. And we're flaunting ourselves on social media, and we don't know that we need to how to handle sensitive spiritual information, the interpretation of spiritual information, communication, text messages. We don't even, just like the sons of Issachar, we are not preparing ourselves, but we just think it's a gift that we need to let everybody know, yes, I am gifted, I'm a seer, but this is more than that. We are coming closer to the end time. And I love this text in Philippians chapter 1, verse 27. You can see what Apostle Paul is telling uh, 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 the citizen of Philippi or the citizen of, of, of Romans at, the, at that particular time. But the most important thing is talking about our citizenship, citizenship which is in Philippians 3.20. We need to lay hold, first of all, about our citizenship. In my country, they say, if you are not born right, burn yourself right. And, and, that's, and that's the issue, reason why you, and I'm just going to say this. That's one of the reasons why you don't see a lot of churches and a lot of church leaders, because you can see the temperature of, you know, just by going through YouTube and all the things that leaders supposedly walk in holes in righteousness, and we yes. have all these faults. And and we're, and matter of fact, where they're supposed to be what? The head. The north yeah, and matter yeah. fact, and I was, um, Pastor Parson, I was reading my Revival If book to study, and he was just, he kept saying over and over again, in reference to that, the anointing is supposed to run, come from the head down, the head down. But the head is all jacked up. Is there any wonder why we're seeing what we're seeing in the body of Christ? Because yeah. like you said, you cannot go into war. Walking not in holiness and righteousness, apostle, is like not being prepared. That's right. That's right. 
And so therefore, and they know they're not prepared. So therefore they're not going to even get in the war, which we yeah. also to be in a spiritual battle. And I really get that. I say I get really dogmatic at this because we are all supposed to be saints of God. We're all supposed to be in the fight. And I say this to intercessors. I say, stop allowing people who lives are all jacked up, don't walk in holiness. They can't get a prayer through. So that's why they're pimping your gift. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, 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 it comes down to not being disciplined. Uh, not being disciplined in the sense we don't have moral conduct. Uh, uh, there's a moral decay in the body of Christ because you can be gifted and lack moral excellence. Say that. You can be gifted and lack moral excellence. Just because you're a seer does not mean you have a moral conduct. And one of the key things that even Prophet Jeremiah, one of the key things he was saying, in the, I think in Jeremiah chapter 23, he was bashing all the false prophets. Why? Because they lack moral conduct. So one of the one of also the one of also how to check a, a, a proper delivery of a prophetic utterance is by the moral conduct of the prophet <laughs> or the Listen, apostle. You are preaching real good. So so we, we're now seeing the text um, because of time. We're now seeing the text that I've just said. Apostle Paul was exhorting the church at Philippi. It says in verse twenty-seven, only let your conversation. That word conversation is citizenship. Be, be as it it becomes the gospel of Christ. That whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of you, of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit. So, number one thing we ought to do is the spiritual ability to stand in one spirit, in oneness. Oh. Oneness brings multiplication. Oneness brings power in one spirit. In other words, it wants us to strive together. It wants yes. us to come together. It wants us to come like a team. So it's not uh, uh, you're an apostle, you're an archbishop, I have to have a special seat. We need to cluster together one spirit. There is something that happened with one spirit. Look at what happened in, in Israel. The opposition party came together. They came together in one spirit. You cannot defeat the enemy if we're, if we're not in one spirit. In other words, what hits you, hit me. Amen. And what hit me, hits you. So we are in one spirit. Uh, and, and it says, it says that you stand fast in one spirit with one mind, striving together for faith of the gospel. Now, oh. this, that's, this, this bless me in verse 28. And in nothing terrified by your adversary. It says we should not be terrified by our ad adversary. Because the, the process is we need to be one, in one spirit. To fight the enemy, we got to be in one spirit. So if we are in one spirit, we'll be able to strive together. And also, we're not going to be terrified. That. We're not going to be afraid. We're not going to be terrified. And in nothing terrified by your adversaries. Look at what it says. Adversaries. Not just an adversary, but adversary, your enemies. Those who are observing you. So we have personal enemies and we have international enemies. Just like Israel, Israel has personal enemies and they have international enemies. So they have international enemies that are not even close to their territory. They are not even close to their geographical position. So it is it's the same picture of a believer. A believer has a personal enemy and Come an on. international enemy. Say that. Say a that. Believer, a believer has a personal enemy and also an international enemy because you are, you are well known by the people who are not close to you. And, and, Hallelujah. And this is the reason, Apostle, why... Um, I was post, you know, like we, every man got work on their own soul salvation. And so everybody's sitting back doing, that's why I said the USA, you need to be praying as well. We have an enemy, <laughs> right? Yes. They're over there sending death threats to America. Yeah. To America. yeah. Yes. And we're you sitting see? over here on our social medias 
you know, no one's coming together. Where's the power of prayer? We we all looked at what the entertainers are doing, the basketball yes. players, the football players. But at the end of the day, we we gather in stadiums for football. Yes. When have we seen us gather in stadiums on That's a continual right. basis? You know, now I know we talk about the, the Catholic Church, but it did my heart so good to see 5,000 priests and Catholics walk down the streets for Israel in, in New York. Mm -hmm. That was unity. That was coming together on one accord, one heart, one mind, the only denomination that stood out, out front and said equivalently, we're standing with Israel. Yeah, that, that's what I'm talking. Do you see the principle and the application the, the, in one spirit? One spirit brings multiplication, not addition. Mm. Whenever you are whenever you are in one spirit, you can deal with the enemy. We can deal with our adversaries. The adversaries is eaters of bread. Another name for adversaries is eater of bread. They want to eat your daily bread. They want to stuff, they want to stuff your God. daily bread. You see, because, and I like, in the conclusion of the text, it says, and in nothing, ter in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evidence of talking of perdition. I wish we can read this in the Amplified Version. A talking of perdition, it means our adversary are doomed for destruction. And let me and, and and when you said was not to be fearful, I had the Lord got this in my spirit. Galatians two to go with that. Yes, this is what Christ has already did. We said was not to be fearful. Galatians two fifteen. Yes. when he had this on the rulers and authorities, those supernatural forces. Here we go, apostles. Yes. Those yes. supernatural forces of evil operating against us. You see, operating against us. Mm -hmm. made, made, he made a public example of them, exhibiting them as captives in his triumphal procession, having yes. come up over them through the what? Yes. The cross. The through power the cross. of the cross. The power of the cross. And, and you see what, what happens in that text is so powerful. I wish we can also read it in um let me see. Let me just pull it up. Let's stay, let's stay, prophetess. Let's stay on that text, please, because this this is so powerful. Because we've already had the victory, but what is what is lacking is how we're going to encamp together, how we're going to operate in one spirit. Is that operating in that one spirit? Everybody, drop off your titles, drop off your background, and let us gather together and form an institute. How we can deal. With our adversaries, because you show, Let, like you said, those supernatural forces of evil operating against us. That's all. It's that's against right. us. Yes. Not black. Yes. Not white. Not blue. Green. African. Indian. Yeah. Or what? It says us. U.S. Yeah, that's right. London. Us. If you have, if you hold the cross, he's talking to us. And even yeah. if you're yeah. not a Christian and you in the USA, he's still talking to us. You and that's London, right. he's still it's still a us coming up that's when right. the bombs listen when the bombs go, I don't think they're gonna pick out any any type of denomination, any uh where you black, white, or green, it's gonna hit everybody. Uh, it, it is I was just sharing um with one of my friends uh that's we need to bypass skin pig pigmentation. We need Amen. to bypass skin pigmentation and 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 operate as a citizen of the kingdom of God because Woo! in the kingdom of God there is no skin pigmentation. Thank there's God. no skin. There's no skin pigmentation. Whether you're brown, whether you're tan, whether you're white, whether you're green, there's no skin pigmentation. God wants us to cluster together in this season. He wants us to cluster together, and this is a very strong warning to us. For to you, you can see how how uh, uh, the enemy. Uh, uh, traveled through the tunnel. They were they went through the tunnel. They were using the same strategy that King David used to get into a place that is being fortified. Because wow. the enemy, the, we have to have knowledge about the about the tactics and the strategy of the enemy, and it has to be a collective effort. Can we interpret in, interpret the sound, the communication? Can we interpret the, the text messages? Can we interpret the the signals? Even in our dreams, can we interpret it? Do we understand spiritual warfare in our dreams? 
A lot of people have been attacked, and God is downloading information to them that He allows the enemy to attack you. But can you actually interpret? Do you have knowledge about the dimension of how the enemy is attacking your finances? Is attacking your health? What are they using to attack you? And, and they, they, I'm gonna drop this little nugget here because they, you know, it, they came by land. They said it came by land. It came by sea. Yes. If, there is, and this is why we don't understand about the kingdom of darkness. They use the five elements that that are related to Satan. Yeah, yeah. That's the fire, the earth, the metal, the water, and the wood. I'm just gonna drop that there. That that mm -hmm. that because everybody's saying we got one minute. Oh, how did they, they way they went? That's why you know Satan was behind. Yes. They use all the elements, yes. things yes. that we don't really know about in the kingdom of God because we don't understand the spiritual warfare. But yeah. Pastor, we got one minute, Amen. We probably get wow. about thirty seconds. It was awesome to have you here. We My pleasure. Back here again, I want My you to do a quick thirty-second prayer to close us out. Father, in the name that is above every other name, we thank you because we have the victory, because of the redemptive power that is in the blood of Jesus. Let every spiritual warfare cease right now instantly let it cease we sprinkle the blood of jesus and we we stop the activities of the enemy and we declare jerusalem is free we declare that jerusalem is a covenant of peace is it is a teaching place of peace we declare the peace of god and we declare the victory of god in jesus mighty name amen and amen amen and remember jesus is lord if this broadcast has been a blessing to you Feel free to partner with us by sowing a seed at gbfic.org or mailing a check to Morning Glory at 1126 Northeast Delta School Road in Lee Summit, Missouri, 64064. If you need special prayer of any kind, please feel free to call us at 816-795-1900.